I know I have friends who are like, I'm with my family. They never ask about my business. They never ask how I'm doing. Do you ask them how their job's doing? Sometimes as an entrepreneur, we just it's always in our head. We always have ideas. We're so excited and we want to share it and we want people to be interested. But expecting our family. Hey guys. So today I'm going to talk about that thing that we are all familiar with as moms. And that is this feeling of being alone in our business. Whether you are somebody who's been in business for a long time or you're somebody who's just trying to ditch the nine to five and start something on your own that maybe could replace your nine to five or allow you to scale back. Or maybe you just have a side hustle and you're just trying to make it all work, but you feel like nobody gets it or people aren't supporting you. You're still juggling all the other responsibilities that you have around the house with your children, all of that stuff. Not to mention all the things that you keep in your head, but you've got that like tap on the shoulder, like to create something, to build something, to do something, to be creative, change the world, make an impact, whatever. The one thing that can be really disheartening is to feel alone and just feel like nobody gets this drive that you have, but it's really common. And so I just wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about the four things that I see are the scaffolding that can help get us through so that we don't feel like we're just going to give up because nobody gets it or we don't have that support. And so the first thing is understanding that it's totally normal to feel this way. And so many moms, especially, I do a ton of social listening and peeking into groups and things like that. So women who are really very good at what they do and they're even doing really well, they still feel alone. They still feel like they're on the edge of burnout. And sometimes we can lose friends and the support that we maybe had before for a whole bunch of different reasons. And so I think part of being an entrepreneur is setting yourself apart from the people around you and trying really hard to find people who do get it. And that I understand is easier said than done, especially if you've got all the plates spinning with other responsibilities with children and home and work and whatever else you have going on. So just understand this is not just you, it's a norm. Accepting it really does help. I know for me, I was like, okay, I'm not alone in feeling this. So that's really good. And then the other thing is just building a support system and building that support system. You have to think outside the box. So you have your regular friends who maybe you knew from high school, college, your neighborhood, maybe they're your friends and your family. You got to broaden things. And so looking around, whether it's events on Facebook that are virtual events, seminars, looking for webinars, upcoming events through your local SCORE, which is like a small business research. Your small business association has SCORE and that they have all different kinds of workshops, webinars, things like that, where you could just maybe be writing some comments. You block off a little bit of time during the day, or maybe you show up at a local event. You could join your chamber of commerce. You could join meetups and cherry pick what makes sense. Like, who are you most likely to connect with? For me, as a podcaster, content creator, mompreneur, interested in spirituality, mindset, those kinds of things. I look for groups where there's definitely going to be people like me who I feel like I'm in my own tribe. And when you go, just make sure you're bringing either your LinkedIn has its little QR code so you can swap phones and people can follow you on LinkedIn and you can follow up that way or bring an old-fashioned business card. Make sure you can hand it out. I just got one made. I haven't had a business card in a while and I got one with my photo on it just so people can put a face with a name. I got these at Staples. They're not great, but they serve the purpose and I've done some local events recently and just getting out, stepping into the role of I'm a CEO, I'm an entrepreneur, whatever your role is, like mentally framing it Yes, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I'm building. Getting back out there for me, I was under the radar for a period of time with a sick kid and really holding back a lot. And I'm like, I have to get myself back out there. So finding more opportunities, more people, those events are great. You can look at Eventbrite, Meetup, as I mentioned, Facebook has Facebook events. Some of these things are virtual, but some of them are also in person. So it's really what works with your schedule. I know Eventbrite was great for me. I was able to find some coffee entrepreneur meetups that worked with my schedule. It was it was 11 to 12. So it was like the end of the morning, but lunchtime. So even if you had a nine to five, maybe you could find one that's near you. There are also tons online. And I think 
The one thing to do is if you're on a Zoom or something virtual, make sure you write some comments so that people get to see your personality, introduce yourself, say what your business is, maybe even put link to your website, your social, whatever in there where it's appropriate and comment back to other people. Don't try to distract if there's a presentation, but sometimes they're asking you questions and it's really helpful to participate because that's how you connect with these other people. They're going to remember your, oh, that's nuts. Cindy, she has the business for moms who want to learn how to run a 10K race, right? So something like that, like you can quickly make comments and that's going to help you feel like you're getting your name out there. And then if you show up, I know with SCORE, the Small Business Association, their workshops and things like that usually happen weekly. So you can have like at least four a month, probably more. Just pick one. And if you show up a few times and you comment, like they're going to begin to know you and that's another way to feel connected. And then the other thing is if you're going to live events, let's say there is a workshop, there's a conference, a local small conference that's just part of the day or half a day. It's not like a big commitment, but it's local. So you're going to meet other people like you. You're going to bring your cards and all that stuff and just practice like an elevator pitch so you know what it is that you're selling and doing. Look in the mirror, talk to yourself in the car, record yourself, whatever you need to do to really feel confident when you step into that. And there's one, I'm an introvert. So I shut down almost immediately when I get into a room full of a lot of people and they're clumped. Unless I have a buddy coming with me, which usually isn't the case. That's the whole point of going is like you're looking for people (laughs) to become friends with. So then obviously if you make them and it works out, you can go with friends. But it's hard when you're alone. And I know for me, I shut down. So when I can practice a little bit of like, visualizing, okay, I'm going to be in the room. Somebody says this, I'm going to say that, or I'm going to ask them about their business. I'm not just going to hand out my card. I'm going to have a conversation and planning it out really helps. And then the follow-up afterwards is super important. So I love that LinkedIn has this new QR code that's in your LinkedIn profile. It's in the top right corner on your phone. And you just can have somebody take a picture of that. They'll follow you. You can follow them back and you can just see where that goes. I just had a local event and that really helped us all stay connected. And then the other thing is once you do meet somebody through that, stay connected, like intentionally follow up. Hey, Cindy, I really liked your business idea. It was really fun meeting you. I know you said you were looking for X, Y, Z. Like Maybe they were looking for help or somebody to work part-time or somebody who knew something that you happen to know about. You can say, I look through my network and here's the name of Jim, the guy that I thought of, whatever. Like just try to have a reason to stay connected. And if you find an article or a podcast or something, send it to him. Say, hey, I thought of you. We were talking about this at that event. And this is the idea that you had and this is related or something. Like just think of little things you can do to keep giving and letting them know that they're in in your thoughts. Just be a helpful person. And I think pe- that's just very attractive overall. They're like, oh, this person bought my business. They thought of me. So that really helps. And I have people that I've met at conferences too, too that I met who I talk to weekly, either through WhatsApp or phone calls or texting. And we really stay connected. And when we don't, it's tough because it's it's really nice to have people who are in, we're not even in the same business or anything, but it's just nice because we're business people. And so they're in other states. That's the downside, but we can still stay connected through all these apps and things. So that's just my little pep talk for the week. I hope you guys are doing well. And I just appreciate you being here listening. And if this is valuable to you, please consider sharing and subscribe. And I will see you on the next episode.